little turn broods her chicks on the seashore in the Gibraltar Point Nature Reserve, the last refuge in Lincolnshire for this most delightful seabird. Just one of the many natural treasures which are cared for by the Lincolnshire Trust for Nature Conservation. Lincolnshire, second largest, but one of the least known of English counties. Most people think that Lincolnshire is flat and uninteresting. In fact, it is a county of varied scenery. The Fenland itself is one of the most fascinating of man-made landscapes. Vast circle of the sky, straight roads, straight dikes, and always somewhere on the horizon, the punctuation mark of Boston Stump. Ours is a long, flat coastline, mud flats and salt marshes, sandy beaches as far as the eye can see, backed by dunes or sea walls. Breakers topple lazily shoreward on a quiet summer day, but in winter they crash against the defences which protect the marshland against a repetition of the flood disaster of 1953. Lincoln's splendid minster on its hilltop is a familiar sight to holidaymakers as they flock to the coast in summer, but few tourists discover rural Lincolnshire. Between the North Sea coast and the Wolds, is the strip of country known as the marshland. In April, the rooks look out from their nests over a long and level landscape. Through the summer months, the Lincoln red cattle fatten on rich pastures. In the wolds, the farms and villages are in the valleys. Tennyson's own brook rushes over mill races and slips between tree-lined banks. Spring comes late to the swelling chalk uplands. The valleys in the limestone plateau of Kestevan are more wooded and the villages are stone built. Lincolnshire has for long been the leading agricultural county in England and proud of it. But Lincolnshire is not all rural and agricultural. There are vast changes afoot, especially in the north of the county. Grimsby has long been the premier fishing port of England. The steel centre of Scunthorpe has mushroomed in a century from a village among the heaths to an industrial city of over 70,000. Around it, the countryside is eaten away by mechanical giants in the quest for iron ore. Along much of Humberside, a vast new urban and industrial region is developing. This will change the character of North Lincolnshire and will affect all the rest of the county. Already there are problems of waste disposal and pollution. More cars and lorries on the roads. More people in the country lanes. Our towns and industries must expand as our population grows. But how can we ensure that the interest and beauty of the countryside will survive for all who wish to enjoy it? Over the centuries, the Lincolnshire landscape has been transformed by man. In 1750, this was still a sparsely populated county of coastal dunes and marshes, fens, heaths, downlands, and remote forests. A century later, it had become the most intensively cultivated county in Britain and the wild places had shrunk to remnants. The work of the Lincolnshire Trust for Nature Conservation 
must be seen against the background of this rapidly changing situation. Here is James Fisher to speak about the county trust's movement with which he is closely associated. The future of wildlife and wild places in the countryside depends fundamentally on local voluntary effort in conservation. This is what the county trusts are for. Lincolnshire was a leading pioneer of a movement which has spread in the last 10 years throughout the whole kingdom. My own trust serves Northamptonshire in the soak of Peterborough, and we don't mind saying we've learned a lot from Lincolnshire. Some of those who support the trust are, of course, naturalists. The majority are people who simply love nature and the countryside and are deeply concerned about them. The trusts have already many achievements to their credit, not least the cooperation they've developed with landowners, with the national trusts and other countrywide voluntary conservation bodies and public bodies such as the Nature Conservancy, the county councils and the national parks and forestry commissions. One of their principal tasks, and it's an urgent one, is to establish reserves to protect the best of their county's remaining wild places and habitats. The Lincolnshire Trust already manages about 2,000 acres and more than 20 reserves. Ted Smith, the secretary of the Trust, is now going to tell you about some of these reserves and the Trust's other activities in the care and conservation of the countryside. This is Hoplands Wood, but let us look at it in springtime. A typical Lincolnshire boulder clay wood. Oak and ash standards over ash and hazel coppice, with birch and alder, elm and willow, field maple and gelder rose. The primrose. The so-called oxlip which is really a primrose cowslip hybrid. The strange flowers of Herb Paris. The delicate early purple orchids. Spikes of bugle provide nectar for the foraging insects. A wealth of plants and animals. And that's how the trust intends to maintain it. Fristney decoy wood is different. Here the soil is peaty and pine and birch are dominant, with fern and bracken beneath. The old decoy pond, now partially re-excavated, was made when the nearby East Fen was a tract of mirrors and reed beds, teeming with wildfowl. Today, this is a quiet place, the home of woodland birds like the great spotted woodpecker. At dusk, the badgers leave their sets. The field mouse is also active. Some of our reserves are owned. Others are established by agreement with landowners. The Forestry Commission, for example, are always ready to cooperate in protecting rare species, like this handsome checkered skipper butterfly, now confined to only three or four counties in England. Private landowners play a vital part in safeguarding some of our special natural treasures. Here in this carefully protected heronry, Nature Conservancy scientists, with the help of the trust and the owner, are studying the herons to discover the effects of poisonous chemicals which the birds are known to accumulate from fish and other prey. Some of our Lincolnshire heronries have suffered a drastic decline in recent years. This important investigation may tell us why.